Yeah, we are on. Welcome to another evening of Front Row Material. My name is Mike Freeland. I am joined by my uh, my follically challenged friend. He is the Rit. He is looking good, as always, my friend. Rit, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing not too bad, Freeland. Uh, you know, here in here in the new uh, the new man man office here. The new man office. I like it. It looks good. That looks uh, looks almost as good as you do. Well, I can't always look as good as me, but you know what? You come in a close second. So how is how has life been treating you since the last time we talked? A lot of downs, little ups. You know, got got some good good news though. Good announcements. Good. Hey, we love good announcements here on the show. Um, I have some announcements as well to talk about before uh, before we get into it here. I'm gonna adjust my. Matt and Nick Jackson action figures over here by my computer. Love these guys. Man, I tell you what, Jazzwares does a fantastic job with these action figures. I mean, the articulation is just incredible, and the facial features are awesome. Uh, just just loving them. Loving them. And I hear you have a you have a beef. Uh, a beef with uh, with the whole baby action face, figure. Baby face bug shafted me hardcore. Well, I tell you what, what you hey, what you choose to do behind closed doors is completely your own business. Okay, let me let me paint the picture. Picture this. Sicily, Sicily 1924. 1924. Oh, 84. My bad. 84. Yes, 84. I'm sitting there, you know, driving the Walmart, and I get a little uh, picture going. You got a little pixies going, a little uh and I look down. Guess what it is? I, I can't it imagine. It is a bunch of AEW Series 6 action figures. Okay. I'm like, oh, shit. It's from my good Friday, Babyface Bug. Babyface Bug. Didn't even text him. Called him. Oh. Nothing. 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 Texted him. Did he I, want, I want these. Tried calling again right away. Huh. Nothing. I go and text him. He texts me back. Dude, I already left. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. So Boog. Is it Boog or what did you call him? Babyface Boog. Babyface Boog. So Boog he, finds these action figures. Yes. Oh, we know he was born 45 minutes ago. There's no doubt about that. In fact, there's probably still placenta on the floor, but we'll get to that. So he has the audacity, the unmitigated gull to send you a picture yes after he's already left the store yes and there were figures there there was there was plenty if if boog if boog is listening boogster i should be the guy hold on and we were talking about this earlier the rich don't get richer okay the poor should get richer but, why am I not? Why am I not getting these text messages? Why am I not seeing these these? But picks? Freeland, why would the man go to you when he knows he can get paid from me? Oh, 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 oh. you you are in rare fashion tonight. Why come to me when he knows he'll get paid from you? Why are you thinking that I would not pay the man? I did pay the man the last time he got action figures for me. Boog can confirm that. I, I'm just showing them all. Yeah. But you've already got a ton, dude. Seriously. But I, but I don't have Series 6. When is your wife... When Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. I never got... Whoa! To, you whoa. son of a bitch. Whoa! You, no, this is not accurate. This is not accurate. He got uh, payment. The, Freeland, I must say, I'm going to agree with, and believe you. Why? Can't trust Babyface. No. Nope. Can't do it. So you're so, ups you're upset with Boog right now because he, his oh, oh oh this I believe I got a payment from Megan, not Freeland. You're having the wife pay the bill skis, huh? You need to really put that on the screen. You really oh. need to put that in the chat there, Boogster, huh? 
Can't believe it. Hey. Uh, let's let, so let's get to this really quick. What figures did he have? What figures did he send the picture of? Oh, the whole series six. They were all at the Walmart. All. Boog. 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 You know. You know how hard I look for these things. Hakuro Shida. Hakuro Shida. I'd love that. Phoenix. I'd love Phoenix. I'd love yes. Phoenix. MJF. Jack Hagar. Pentagon. They're all there. If there was a way I could ban Boog for 24 hours, I would. We should. We're just going to ignore him. How's that sound? Well, he didn't get a hold of you. And even though you do have a lot of figures, I mean, you do. Let's be honest. You have more than the average person probably has. You have Freelance. every series up to the current. Am I correct? No. I, I'm missing series five. So you, and you five you, and six. Okay. But didn't you tell me you're gonna buy series five soon? Yeah. Okay. But but if I could have bought series six. Wait, you know. So was all of the figures he had the full series? Yeah. How many are in series? Series six. No, six. but how how many six? six? I don't yeah, but, but Freeland, yeah, I have a lot. I probably have more invested in my AEW action figures than you do your retirement. Than you do on your cell phone. You know I use prepaid. Exactly. You know I don't put a lot of money in this phone. Exactly. That, that's why. <laughs> let's pull the curtain back a little bit. Picture this, Sicily, 1993. I'm talking to you yeah. on the way home from picking up Meg's car. And uh, I purposely say right in front of Meg's that I might end up having to put you on my phone plan so I can get a hold of you. She, you she, had a conversation with my wife about... No, putting... I had a conversation with you and she overheard her. She, remember, she was completely busted up laughing. I don't remember that conversation ever happening. Uh, do we need to get her on? No, we do not. She is okay. resting. So, yeah. Yep. Never stops, does it? Never stops. The, no. hits, the hits keep coming. Yes, yes. ECW fan, she does wear the pants in that relationship. Well, you know the hits are going to come when they come from a Yankee baseball bat. Yeah, baby. Oh, good Lord. How about my Cincinnati Reds? I tell you what, they may be making a push for the National League. Nick Castellanos came he, back. He is. He came back from that that fractured wrist. Liking what so, I'm seeing. Uh, you should. But speaking of Yankees. Yep, let's talk about Yankees. Let's talk about a Yankee fan. Let's talk about a Yankee fan. Let's talk about the newest addition to Future Stars Now. Yes. Do you want to like make the announcement, Freeland? I mean, you've already started. Would you like to continue and finish it, or would well, you like to I was, it? I was trying to set you up. Oh, you, okay. You, That's you what you're trying. Uh, come on, you, you fish all the time. I do fish all the time. You know, but when I'm, you say, but I'm when you say, you, you say set me up means you threw me a softball and then I hit it. Not fishing. Yeah, you know, you kind of threw me off there. Yeah, we're throwing everybody off. Our good friend Kate Hensler, who's. Uh, Kate on deck, I see you follow her on Twitter. She is uh, is going to be working in conjunction with us. We're very excited about that. And she actually was on location. She was a correspondent this past weekend. And we're going to talk about where she was, what she saw, and all the details about that. That's going to be coming up in the show tonight. Yeah, I, I, it's a huge addition to us. It only makes us better. And that takes not very much. But no, I, I love that she she was willing to go the distance, went out there to yep. Binghamton, Binghamton, New York. Binghamton, New York. Not too far. Well, for me, not just, you. Just just for us. She went out there for FRM. Yeah, to uh, to get her little toesies in the water to to see see how it was, and she went to excite wrestling. I don't think she needs to get her toes in the water. She's pretty exper. I mean, like, let's be honest here. I, I when she went and told us that I had no idea. Like, does she actually sit back and watch herself? 
like you and I could just go off the screen and she could run the show herself. Well, I mean, she's she's very accomplished when it comes to wrestling, and I think that's a big thing. When you know your stuff and you know what you're talking about, that's what it's all about. Exactly, and I'm just know, a pretty, I'm just a pretty face. I don't know what that makes you, but I, I just booked the talent. Don't you do? You're the you're the Booker man, and and, and apparently, not a very good one after you know, tonight. <laughs> You know, the thing about booking guests is that it's it's very much a crapshoot. Um, and, and I don't mean that in a disparaging way towards the guest, meaning things come up quickly. Uh, things change quickly. Life changes quickly. And no matter how well you plan for something to happen or for something to work out, sometimes they just don't. And you got to be able to adjust with that and go on the fly. Exactly. And it was quite ironic. I was talking to Actually, both Jerry and Mikey in the past couple hours. You're getting phone calls from uh, my tag team partners? Well, well, well yeah. Jerry would uh, talk about 10 minutes, you know, a, a week average, maybe every two weeks mm -hmm. uh, on the way to the airport. Because he's going out to, I call it, Ritzburg, PA. Oh, but he calls it. Britsburg, PA. Oh, yes. And and I said, well, if you're there, I don't mind uh, doing a little one-on-one -on -one shoot. See, see who's is better, Britsburg from Dr. Britt Baker or Ritzburg from the Rit. Jerry's words were, she'd eat you alive. Oh, she would. So I'm like, okay, we're good. She, she'd eat your lunch. So... But yeah, he was on his way there. And we, we were doing a little chit chatting. And he, he said that he, he loves the direction we are, you know, concentrate on the young talent. Well, Jerry's got an eye for talent. So he likes the fact that we are headed in a new direction. We are taking the show to uh, an area that has not yet been tapped into previously. Area 51. I'm a big Area 51 fan. Uh, let's go. It's, I love it's, it. While we're out there, you know, I could slap Boog around a little bit. We should pick we should pick Boog up, drive out to Area 51, and then leave his ass. Just leave him right out there in the in the desert. I can't believe he did that to you. The just and you think you know people and you think you understand people, and then they do this kind of stuff. Exactly. Unbelievable. Unacceptable. I get no respect around here. Nothing. Nothing. So anyway, uh, so no guest here in the eight o'clock in the eight o'clock hour, as you probably have already noticed already. It's the Ritzter and I, and uh, Kate, the correspondent, is going to be coming through. Uh, she's in a hurricane right now. She is, uh, yeah, she's 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 batting down the hatchets and she's trying to make sure that everything stays afloat in uh, in Jersey. New Jersey. In Jersey, in, yeah, she's in Jersey and she's not even a Jets fan. That kind of stuff bothers me. She's in Jersey, and she's not a Giants fan. Why would you be a Giants fan? Because. I think you and I are going to be at odds with each other because MetLife Stadium is the home of the New York Jets. It is not the home of the New York Giants. Um, Excuse me? Yeah. Well, I didn't hear you fart, but you're excused. Well, well, we just got an update from Kate. She looked outside, and there are lines down. Outlook, very cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> you just looked at your watch. Yeah, I have an app. Free, okay, Freeland. Oh. Okay, here in 2021. Oh, uh, here it is. The for, rich get richer. Yeah, for, action for, figures, and now the, it's watches. For, for the upper class, we, I've got an Apple Watch. And and think about an, the Apple Watch for a minute. Think back to like 1984, 85, 86. Yeah. For show Knight Rider. Yeah. Did you ever in a... 40 years, 50 years, think, man, we're going to be able to talk on our watch just like he, him. Like Michael Knight? Yeah. I did not think that would be possible. You know? Although I, I did hold out hope. Um, can and, you talk on your watch right now? Yeah, you want me to call you? Well, why would you need to call me? L want me to call Bug? I can call him out live in the air. We should try We should try to get, uh, we should try to get uh, the Katester on, on the, on audio. 
But uh, let, me, let me text. See if we can get her on audio. So the moral of the story is, kids, if you are a friend and you know somebody wants something, then what you have to do is you have to go that extra mile and you have to help them out. You know, people know that I am a big action figure fan. And Boog didn't even have the decency to contact me to yeah. say, hey, hey, you know what, Freeland? I would love to go ahead and get you an action figure. Or I would like to at least give you the heads. I didn't even get the picture. Rick, you're going to have to forward me that picture. Because was this at a Walmart he was at or was this at a Target? Yes. This was at a Walmart? I'm really taken back right now. I'm going to try to get her. Oh, Boog says it's a tar it was at a Target. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. No, it's it's not all the same. You're a mess. You realize that? You are a hot-blooded mess. I just sent her the link to her phone, told her she wants to join just audio. Target, Target. is higher class. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't care if it's a 7-Eleven. If they sell AEW extra figures, I'm going to get them. Now, would you do that for me, though, if you realized that you, you had what you needed? Would you contact me? Liam Savage in, uh, in Canada, our second favorite Canadian, actually got a hold of me, and he said he has some action figures. He was worried about the duty. What? I thought, Not, you, said you, I thought you went to the bathroom before we started. Well, I did, but, you know, I have issues. I may have to go again. Uh, but no, he said uh, it was the duty that may be an issue with this. Is there a duty issue if he sends it to me? I didn't think there was. I thought it was if I send it to him. I I have no idea. I didn't think there was. Hmm. So. I don't know. Well, Freeland. Yes. Let's, uh, let's talk about this Saturday. Let's talk about Saturday. PPW. It's going to be a big major event that's going to be happening in Pennsylvania, it is um, something that we've been looking forward to for the last several weeks, ever since we had both the owners of PPW on. So we're excited about that. And their big event is going to be called Aerial Assault. So let me ask you this question. How did this whole PPW, FRM, Future Stars Now relationship happen? You were kind of the catalyst behind all this. Well, <clears throat> I... I a couple, a uh, couple buddies of mine actually worked for PPW. Nice. And you know, I was talking to them about what we do on Future Stars now and, and what our plan is and stuff. And they're like, "Here, here's Anthony's uh, number. Send him, send him out uh, a little reach. Tell him your ideas and you know, see what he thinks." And wow, you know, it didn't take take long. You know, as you know, you and I had a had a sit down interview with him and Paul, you know, almost immediately. And then we brought him on as guests and, you know, they, uh, they, they, they were all for us. And, you know, this Saturday we're going to hit the ground running. So. Now do I, we have, do we, we still have the big, uh, the promo video, the, the commercial that's airing right now, which people can find out about where and when and where to get their tickets at. Yes, we do. Let me uh, bring it up. Here we go. Broadheadsville, Pennsylvania. An aerial assault of epic proportion is coming your way on Saturday, August 14th. PPW is live from Signature Training Academy in Broadheadsville, Pennsylvania. Come see Mojo Raleigh, Davey Richards, Jillian Hall, Brian Cage, Alpha Jr., and from the Dark Order, Preston Vance. Tickets are on sale right now at ppwwrestling.com. Wow. So there is an amendment to the card, though, correct? Yes, yes. And we will be talking about that match at the top of the hour. We will. That will be a replacement for Mr. Brian Cage. So Brian Cage will not be on the card. However, we do have a replacement for Brian Cage, which we'll be excited to mention. Um, there's so many different people. I'm, I'm on their website right now, and 
as you heard in the commercial, you can get your tickets if you go right to the website. It's super, super easy. Um, you can buy tickets. You can buy merch. You click under the shop tab and it gives you all the information. So if you want to go ahead and click on buy tickets, click on the blue meanies face and you can go ahead and click right there and it'll take you right where you need to go to buy tickets. Super easy, super easy. Now, where are you in regards to, uh, is it Broadhurst? Yeah, hour away tops. Nice. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited about this. So, as I'm clicking on here, it is, it says $20 to get in, rows two and three. Um, you can pick how many you want. You can put your quantity right here, load it right into your cart, and you're good to go. I mean, I would not wait till the day of the show to get tickets for the simple fact that we have been told that tickets already are going quickly. So you don't want to be one of those people that says, oh, yeah, we're going to go to the show tonight, and then there's no show tickets. So don't, don't be one of them people. Exactly. Uh, front row sells out almost immediately The because the, they, they do it along the lines of first come, first serve is the got people at the show can buy for the next show. So, wow. bam, you want front row seats, you got to go to the show to get front row seats for the next show. It's amazing, you know? And you want to do a little rundown of the card? I think we should do a rundown. I like it. What we're going to do is we're going to start from the top. One of our good friends, Ms. Pee Pee Poo Poo, Erica Lee. Erica Lee, Pee Pee Poo Poo herself. We saw her, her on an episode recently, yep. Making her PPW debut because of a good connection that she knew. Takes on the longest reigning PPW Women's Champion, Ms. Christina Marie. Christina Marie. Ooh, that should be a good match. Man, I can't wait. And, well... We have a little uh, a little thing of what Christina is going to sit there and talk talk about. You ready? Let's go ahead and cue it up. I have been representing pure professional wrestling for the past couple of years for this company. And if you think you're going to come here and disrespect with your goofy pee pee poo poo bullshit, Eric Lee, you got another thing coming. <laughs> I'm gonna force you to take this business seriously. Honk on this bitch. Oh my gosh. She's got her face all X'd out as well. That's not good. Not good for our, our good friend Erica. Man, oh. it, it looks like Christina Marie is somebody you do not want to mess with. No, I don't think you want to mess with she, her. She takes this business seriously. You know, she held that women's title for PPW for two years. And Erica Lee is coming in there. And you know how she likes to have fun, you know? Very much so. Honk, honk, pee, pee, poo, poo. Heck, heck, she sit there and she took everybody to the limit at the Pooper 8 tournament. Not to be confused with what it's actually known as the Super 8 tournament. And, man, Erica Lee, good luck to you. But, man, Christina Marie looks like she's just a bulldozer wanting to plow right through you. Love your descriptions. A bulldozer looking to plow through you. You, my friend, you're good with words. Hey, I try. You are a czar of vocabulary. Hey, what what kind of room are you in? What the hell is that? Is that like the uh, the? Uh oh, uh oh! I see an animal. Oh my god! That's my dog up here. Until uh, until the sun gets back from football practice. Nice. So, um, when it comes to Erica Lee, let me ask you this question. What is your confidence level that she's going to be able to come in on her debut match in Pull Out of Victory in foreign territory? Man, it's just... It's, 
I say a seven. I'll say a seven just because I know if she gets the crowd going, man, that Freeland, <laughs> right, right here, buddy, right here, eyes up here. Did did your dog did your dog have a cone on his head? Yes, he does. May I ask why? Well, because uh, he he has a he's part Sharpay, so he kind of has that really dry skin, and we have to put lotion on his on him, so we don't want him to uh, chew at him, you know, any worse. So we put the cone on so it dries. Fair enough. I won't ask any more. Who else we got on the card? Okay, next up, I'm going to sit there and. Share this real quick. I think the dog knew we were talking about him. I think he's leaving. You put a cone on him. Mm, 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 mm. This this new room you're in is it like slanted? Like is uh, there like a wall that's like slanted? You kind of got like a bonus space going here. You got like a Jerry Lynn bonus space. Is hey, that slanted? It's, it's, it's slanted. I'm in the attic. You got a little Andrew Lloyd Wright going here. What's what's up with all this? And, and so let me just get it here. Shares. You're queuing it up, and your dog's licking. You're, he's doing something behind you. It's, it's just very. Oh, he's just sitting. He's sitting and spinning. So when it comes to PPW, if you have not gotten a chance to see the interview that we did with the owners, I would highly recommend you go back and it should be on, where should that interview be at? If you go and search on YouTube and search, you could definitely find the interview right on, right on there. Right on our YouTube page. Yeah. Yes. Just type in the search bar, FRM pod. Uh, front row material we're right there click on it and while you're there hit the follow button hit the follow and like button that's all you got to do it doesn't cost you anything just hit the follow and like button all right let's move on here so we got a no limits championship and it's a tables match yes. so wa walk me through exactly what happens in a no limits championship table match well the low mi no limits champion is mr isaac rules he is, a, he is a good personal friend of mine. And it's just, there's no limits. It's kind of like the X division. It doesn't okay. matter what waist, what waist class you're in. Uh, right now, next week, he'll be going up against Rembrandt with Cosmic. And it's going to be a tables match. And, man, this is going to be one that you're not going to want to miss. Isaac Rules is just pure power. You know, so, so Isaac has been, I would assume, the No Limits champion for quite a while now, and it, yes. it looks like Rembrandt is wanting to dethrone him and go ahead and get that championship away and and take his career to the next level. And that was Cosmic that was with him. Yes, and we have a little promo here to show you a little bit about Rembrandt. Let's check out Rembrandt. Let's head to the tape. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? What are we going to do? They made us look like fools. And that was on your watch. Where were you? Where were you? What are we going to do about this? They made us look like fools. What, what does that even mean? I couldn't believe it. I just was... We, we have a plan out there. We are going to do something and then everything can go ahead. And we're going to run that in the way. First of all, don't tell me to do that, okay? Because where was the other thing that was in the way? I didn't see you. 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 I didn't see you.
we're going to do. Get up. Not sure what's going on there in the background, but <laughs> I wasn't exactly quite sure what was happening either. But I I feel the intensity. I think Rembrandt was uh, was channeling his his inner thoughts to try to figure out what he's going to be able to do to take this no limits championship away in a tables match. Yeah, and man, you've got Cosmic there. She she sit there and she's helped them out plenty of times, you know, but. Isaac rules. He's got. He's going to need eyes in the back of his head. Yeah, I, when it comes to Isaac, I, I think he's one of those guys who's got a lot of brute force and strength. I mean, he comes from Williamstown, Pennsylvania. He's a big dude. Uh, he's well over three hundred pounds. He's known as relentless. Um, he has a career in powerlifting, and I mean, when you look at a guy like this, he's very much built like a fire plug. Um, and, and what I mean when I say that is that he's low center of gravity. When you look at him, he is, he's is he got muscle stacked on top of muscle. But you know what? It's not just about how much muscle you have because in wrestling, sometimes it's the mind that can be the most powerful muscle that you use. And in Rembrandt, I'm very, very ex excited to see what Rembrandt is going to be bringing to the table to try to counteract Isaac Rule. And see, I know Isaac personally, and you hit it, the nail right on the head. This man is pure power. You would look at him, and you're like, man, he's probably slow, though. He's not. For a man his size, he's got a little agility, he's got speed, and he's got a little martial arts background. So Rembrandt's going to have to utilize everything, including Cosmic, to get him through a table. Because if rules has it his way, he's going up, down, through the table, match over, pack a lunch. You're going home, kid. Well, if you're familiar with AEW Dark, uh, a lot of people that we bring on this show have had experience and have been booked on AEW Dark. And so has Rembrandt. Um, so if you've seen the show before or you'd like to go back and watch uh, prior episodes of AEW Dark, you definitely can on YouTube. And Rembrandt was on there as well. He's definitely a traveled man. Um, he's been in a lot of different promotions. However, I feel like, as I said before, his mind is probably one of his best assets. And I think what he's going to do is he's going to paint his masterpiece when it comes to this tables match. And it seems like if his plan doesn't work, he always has a fallback plan. Do you see the big heavy he's got in there with him as well? I mean, that guy, I, I don't know if I necessarily would would be very happy if I saw him walking down ringside with Rembrandt. Exactly. So this, this match is, is going to be a toss-up. I'm going to say 50-50. It could go either way. I love tables matches. Do you have a favorite tables match of all time that you've seen? I mean, I know there's been a lot of TLC matches and whatnot, but do you have a favorite tables match that you really, really enjoyed? I would have to say uh, the first one, WWE, the Dudleys versus the Hardys. That to me, that that was that that was poetry in motion. Now. With a tables match, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the first person who puts their opponent through a table is the one who's the victor. Am I correct in that? Correct. It, and unless it's a tag match, then that person's eliminated, and you have to put both opponents through the table. Hmm. So what would your 
strategy be if you were in a tables match yourself? Would you immediately go for the tables and try to set it up in the ring, or would you try to work your opponent and wear them down a little bit? What would be your your forte? Me personally, I would possibly like to double team one guy, get him out of commission, get him out of the match, and then, uh, you know, you both get to work on the other guy and put him through the table. True, but if you're a one-on-one match, you don't really have that luxury of doing that. So no. do you think you work on a body part? Do you think you you lay out this elaborate plan? Or do you think that you take it just the normal way you would take a match, but when he's ready, you go ahead and you put him through? Well, rule number one, see, in all these tables matches, you never, ever set up a table unless you plan on using it right away. Good point. Next thing you know, you set up a table outside – five, 10 minutes goes by, you're on the apron. Someone's sitting there drop kicking it. You go through the table and you, and you lose. You never set up the table unless you're going to use it immediately. Don't set it up. And, 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 and don't, <laughs> and don't try to <laughs> double team some guy. That's uh, that's, that's not going to work. Not in most matches and not in most scenarios in life, but who you picking for this one? I mean, obviously you got rule. Who's a big guy. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I think that he could almost be described almost kind of like a rhino uh, if you want to compare him as, as far as the way his body is built. And then obviously Rembrandt, which is more of a, I don't want to say a cruiserweight, but I want to say he's somewhere between a cruiserweight and a heavyweight. Well, Freeland, you don't know this man like I do. This is true. I don't know so this man. if I don't choose Isaac Rule, I'm going to go through a table. Isaac rules, hands down. Isaac rule, there we go. You have him taking it. Next up, we're going to talk about one of the semifinal matches in the World Heavyweight Title Tournament. Ooh. Yes. We've got the last entertainer, Encore, taking on Mr. Keller himself. Hmm. I love me, Encore. This man, he's athletic. He's got a little showmanship to him. And in case you guys don't know who he is, we're going to sit there and take it to the tape right now. After an impressive, perhaps one of the most impressive PPW debuts of all time, Encore has been given the opportunity of his career as he was entered into the PPW Heavyweight Championship Tournament. There was an empty spot and Encore impressed the up, upper brass at the PPW headquarters so much they granted him a spot in this tournament to see what he could do. They're gonna reset it, there it is, there's the bell! Two, three, one, oh, one shot at the upset! Encore advances for the next round of the PBW Heavyweight Title Tournament. Well, well, what an upset we have seen here tonight. Brad is not happy about that. It was a three count. You were down. He came back. He was starting the match. The song called on his title win. Man, that kid. He's got a lot going for him, and I mean, I think you said it before, he's definitely very athletic. He definitely has the abilities. Um, he definitely has the look. I mean, let's be honest with you. Um, but I also think he, he reminds me a lot of like a combination of an Elix Skipper. Uh, if you're not familiar who Elix Skipper is, you should definitely look it up. The man is or was a phenomenal professional wrestler in his time. Um and who was the wrestler? Oh my gosh, the name is, is slipping me around. He just recently retired again for like the fourth time. Leo Rush. Leo Rush. I think it's a nice combination between Leo Rush and Elix Skipper. Um, now, Encore is from Queens, New York. He is 185 pounds. He's known as the last entertainer, and it's showtime when he enters the ring. Uh, he likes to let people know that he's there to razzle and dazzle him with his charisma and his showmanship, and when the bell rings... He's all about fight, and he's hungry for greatness. Um, when you look at somebody like an Encore, you know, I mentioned before two different people that he kind of reminded me of. 
Is there anybody else that comes to mind that, that people who may not be familiar with Encore may be able to draw a correlation to if you give them an example? Rick Swan. Oh, good call. His, his his dancing, his style, his energy is off the charts. Like like I was there watching a little, watching an encore match, and this man knows how important the fans are. Yes. And when the match is over, I love the love how he thinks. He wants the fans to keep coming back for a encore. I like it. You know. But with he's going up against Keller. Keller Keller's a guy I kind of like. Kind of reminds me of myself. A cocky son of a bitch. Because he's from Cockyville, Maryland. And he is probably one of the most energetic guys, not only in PPW, but in all professional wrestling. His is even get the nickname all energy for nothing. So that's a that's a pretty big name right there. All energy. The, hey, he's a former NCAA track and field all star hurdler. This man's got ups. He's got leaps. Man, and he, he uses his background to fuel a high powered offense where it just keeps going and going. Now, when you look at somebody like Keller. Is there anybody, much like we did with um, Encore, anybody that you could compare him to? Anybody who you see a lot of uh, similarities in? I've got two men. Who you got? One, one of them is, ain't no stopping me, Shelton Benjamin. Ooh, Shelton Benjamin. Oh, man. Like that. He, he, he's, got the, he's got the athletic background. He's got the ups. He's got the agility. And another one I would have to say, it's going to be Chad Gable. Oh, you know? interesting. Chad Gable. What? That's a really good pick. Tell me a little bit why you think it would be Chad Gable. Because he's got that go at, go at you attitude where he's – there's no energy. It's got to keep go, 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 go. You know, he, it, another one that just popped in my mind is Mojo Rowley. Oh, Mojo you know? Rowley's a very good choice, yes. You know, and, and – Jock Zilla is just going to come at you, and he ain't. There ain't nobody going to stop him. You know, but when I think about Keller, there it's like a combination of, of a couple of different people. So the, I think of Angelico, uh, just with his ability. I think he's got the motor of a Johnny Hungy. Um, Ooh, you know, I love me some Johnny Hungy. I know, but I also think he has uh, the grit in the heart of a Darby Allen. So if you were to take those three guys and kind of mesh them together, I think that's what you get with somebody like Keller. Um, I'm excited about this match. I think that, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be able to come out on top this time, but I think he's going to put on a great match. Freeland, I'm going to tell you right now. Tell me. This match, steal the show. Do you think it could be? No, no. Could as if you're guessing. This match will steal the show. So you're telling me this match right now that was just recently signed is going to be the match of the night in a lot of people's minds when they leave. Exactly. Encore and Keller in the ring together. All that energy. There's only one thing it's going to do is just blow up, blow up the house. So the tournament itself is going to be very, very interesting because anytime you have a heavyweight championship tournament, you're going to get not only some of the best combatants in PPW, but you're going to get some of the greatest uh, matchups. And I think this one right here is going to be one of those. Would you say, Rit, that at the end of the day, the winner of this has to be considered one of the favorites to win it all? It has to. You know, whoever wins this, quite possibly could and should be the first PPW champion, heavyweight champion. Well, we're just going to have to find out. We're going to have to find out, and so are you. Please make sure you go over to PPW Wrestling. You go ahead and you click on the shop button. Once you do that, it's going to give you two different options. You can either buy tickets or you can buy merch. Click on the buy tickets tab right there. So simple and easy. 
All you have to do is determine how many tickets you want. Go ahead and put those in your cart, check out, and you're good to go. Do not be one of those people the day of the show that's trying to get in and you find out it's sold out. Rit, have you ever been to a situation where you thought you can get there and then all of a sudden, uh, no, nope, that's a no ski, no tickets? Uh, yeah, plenty of times. You know, baseball mostly, not wrestling, but man, you, you think that, oh, I'll wait till the last minute. No, can't do it. It is aerial assault, and we talked about this before. It does look like uh, rows two and three are still available right now. Admission is going to be $20, as Ritz said before. If you can get your hands on front row tickets, good luck, um, because they normally sell out pretty, pretty quick. But they are available right now. I can tell you this. I can go in and put the tickets in my cart right now. It's going to be on Saturday the 14th. So if you don't have any plans on Saturday night, I definitely would recommend heading on over and checking out PPW's Aerial Assault. What's another match we got for the big show? Well, another match we have coming up is going to be two of our favorites. Ooh. Two of our favorites. We have some faves. The PP Poo Poo has to be probably one of my top faves right there. Oh, they have to. We get Eric. Oh. You know, we should try to get Erica Lee on the phone right now to see if she'll uh, she'll tell us a little bit about what her ins. Oh, waffle cones behind you again. I can't. I'm sorry. I have ADD. I'm completely distracted. When a dog walks around with a cone on his head, I, I just it, it, it's fine. But next up, we're going to talk about tag team matchup. Ooh, it's the Dark Order. Dark Orders own number five and ten. Taking on Appa Jr. and the returning Mike Orlando. Ooh. So, so tell us a little bit about the Dark Order, Freeland. Well, the Dark Order is obviously an AEW faction right here. And 10, which is Preston Vance, is one of what I would say the most raw, talented individuals in AEW right now. Um, when he joined the Dark Order, I think a lot of people were a little skeptical and they weren't exactly sure of what 10 could bring to the table. But the more we see of Preston Vance, the more we continue to be impressed more and more. If you watch either BET, um, you'll definitely see a lot of Preston Vance on there as well. Um I think personally that he is going to be able to contend for the TNT championship at some point. I do believe that Miro is not going to be able to hold that championship for forever. And I think that definitely there's gold in the future for Preston Vance. Now, five, I mean, there's so many things to talk about with five. Five is, I believe, a really underrated wrestler in AEW. Uh, definitely a big member of the Dark Order himself. Um, we haven't seen a whole lot of, of him outside of tag team wrestling. Now, he has appeared on Evolution, or uh, it's, it's Evolution, or um, uh, Elevation. Elevation. And we've seen him in some singles matches before. Very talented, very young. Uh, so I think more time is going to need to be seen to see where he's going to fall out in the shuffle. But, you know, Brody Lee picked these people. He hand picked these people to be in his dark order. So I think no matter what, both of these guys are very capable and very uh, well suited for uh, tag team competition. You know, interestingly enough, before we talk about Alpha Jr. and Mike Orlando, you know, it's been thrown around, and I think this would be a good thing that AEW could do. What about a six man championship? You know, there's been six-man championships before. Obviously, I believe Ring of Honor had it. Um, I know they have him over in Japan. What do you think about something like that? I think this would be perfect for the Dark Order. You and I were talking about that the other day, remember? I do. Like, like you've got so many factions in AEW. Why not? You've got three shows now, four shows, you know. Man, just imagine the talent. you got the Dark Order, six-man. Jurassic Express, you know, you got the pinnacle you can throw in there, you know, inner circle in there. Uh, you got the death triangle. Oh, my goodness. C could you imagine if, if they would be crowned the first ever? You could throw the Nightmare Factory in there as well. Nightmare Factory. You know, you got all these all these factions that are great. 
What about this? What about an Eddie Kingston, John Moxley, Sting trio, which we saw most recently on TV, you know, them being aligned together? Would that be something that uh, might be – stay tuned to see? That would be one way to protect Sting, in my opinion. You know, he, he doesn't have to do a lot. You know, comes in, Stinger Splash, Scorpion Death Drop, you know. That's one way to, to get his star power out there and protect him all in the same thing. Well, I mean, you talk about these guys, you know, you talk about the Dark Order. You cannot forget Johnny Hungy and Alex Reynolds, who, in my opinion, are just as good as the Young Bucks, just as good as any other tag team that's out there, just as good as FTR, just as good as anybody. And I think it's 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 time that they get their opportunity. Um, Johnny Hungy has been coming off of a shoulder injury. Obviously, he's back right now. Uh, I, I believe he's been cleared, so that would be interesting. But let's go ahead and let's talk about who's going to be across the ring from him. We got Mike Orlando and Offa Jr. Tell me a little bit about this Mike Orlando. Mike Orlando was a former standout football player. You know, he he has a resume that would make anybody notice him. In any organizations, you know, he, he's the green machine. He, he's from the gridiron, you know, him. And you put him next to Alpha Jr. The Samoan machine. He is 310 pounds. He's a big boy. And he you comes know? to us from Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, which we know some people from Lehigh Valley. Uh, you know, we know, we, we know one or two, one or two, maybe. Maybe one or two. But w- but when you think about, you know, this combination right here uh, of Alpha Jr., um, they have a very formidable team right there. You know, you got Mike Orlando, who's, who's not a, a small boy by any stretch of the imagination. But then you go ahead and you team him with Alpha Jr., who's a big boy himself. I mean, he's over 6'3 as well. Obviously, he's part of that Samoan dynasty right there. Uh, he is known as the Samoan Storm, and he's been described by many people as a terror in the squared circle, using devastating kicks and incredible power to overwhelm his opponents. He is the son of the Wild Samoan, and he's been wrestling since 1998. So he has been around quite a while, and uh, like I said before, he, he's part of the Anawahi wrestling family. When you look at somebody like that, and you, and you talk about that, I mean, obviously... You know, Yokozuna is part of that family. Um, The Rock is part of that family. Um, Roman Reigns is part of that family. Obviously, the Usos. So it's very deep the way the bloodline runs. And if you remember, um, Afa and Sika were just absolute monsters in their day. So when when it boils down to this, you know, Afa Jr. has it in his blood. He has it in his his lifestyle. Has always been just pro wrestling. And you tag him up with Mike Orlando. I think it could be a long day for the Dark Order. What's your take? Ah, uh, man, I'm so glad that you know five and ten are wearing masks because being in the ring, standing across from those two, you're gonna sit there and start guess- second guessing yourself. You're gonna show nervousness. You know, Dark Order five and ten. Have they ever been in, in the ring with two powerhouses like Alpha Junior and Mike Orlando? And I mean, AEW definitely has a, a, a fair amount of big boys, but I tell you what, a, a Samoan like this uh, and Mike Orlando, I don't know if they've seen two more formidable, formidable opponents uh, in the ring with, with these guys. I think it's definitely going to be an interesting match. What's your take on this, and who do you think is going to come out on top on Saturday night? I'm going to have to go for the favorites, Appa Jr. and Mike Orlando. They, they, they've got home field. That they are so close, you know, to Lehigh, to the Samoan dynasty down there. I don't think the Dark Orders, a five and ten, can come in and be able to sit there and withstand that hometown crowd. Well, you know what? We don't know who's going to win. You don't know who's going to win unless you buy your tickets. Once again, go on over to ppwwrestling.com and you go under their tab that says shop. 
It's either buy tickets or buy merchandise. Once again, buy your tickets first. Make sure you get that locked in, but then go on over and buy yourself some merchandise as well. So I'm doing it right here on my screen. I'm going to click on buy tickets. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my screen here. It's so, so simple. It gives me an option to go ahead and click on the tickets. I go ahead and get that. You click on the tab that says aerial assault. Boom. How many tickets do you want? Put it in the box. Go ahead and hit submit, and you're done. Make sure you are not going to miss out on what is going to be a great night of wrestling. Once again, this Saturday night, the 14th, PPW Wrestling presents Assault. Uh, first row is already gone right now, but second and third are still available, I'm assuming. So instead of just assuming, because you know what that does, it makes it an ass out of you and me. And we already do that perfectly. Go ahead and get your tickets now. Add them to your cart. Make sure that you are ready for one of the best nights of wrestling in Pennsylvania. Brought to you by PPW Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling. Yeah. And, man, I, I'm excited. Freeland, I might actually go to the show. Uh, I wouldn't surprise me. Hop in the car and go, man. How far is how far is Lehigh Valley? Or um, PPW, I should say. Gosh, I got, the, I got the wild Samoan on my mind right now. I'm so excited. <laughs> Man, about an hour, maybe, maybe less. An hour's not that bad no. for a great night of wrestling for twenty dollars. Well, I, I, I might know somebody that you know I could, I could pull a free. No, 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 no. Do as I say, not as I do. That's the way I like to live my life. Hey, hey, I might get in for free, but. I'll Why do you a, say that? Why do you say that live on the air? Come on, we like these guys. But I'll pay him back in the concession stand. Ah, I see. Yeah, I told you that before, Freeland. You have. You said well, you. Well, yeah. You sit there and you go to Vegas. You might lose your money on the crap tables, but you're gonna gain it back at the buffet. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I know what you're saying, my friend. And you know what? There's something else that we'd like to say. There's some wrestlers who'd like to say something. So don't go anywhere. We will be back at the top of the hour with front row material. So don't go anywhere. This is your Tuesday night edition of FSN.